scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If your life must move forward, you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you something. I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives. And I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say, our focus now is holiness. And then later on, they say, our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So, we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it, you cannot find it because what you have held on to is not working. Listen, we are going to pray in one minute and you are going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Pray for one minute. I'm communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today and we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about. Because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here. Yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing. To be in a place it is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it 
proximity is not the same as connectivity that you are close to an anointing that you are close to a revelation does not mean it will become part of your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives that you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married and that commitment you are so ashamed of it is that true to an extent that when you hear people talking and they say how about you so who is for this weekend you just laugh and then you feel to say no 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 i i this is not my ideology it is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come hallelujah every great man is fanatic about something and if you must ever experience greatness especially in the spirit you must have something you are convinced about and you must allow the holy spirit to probe your convictions very interesting scripture the bible says can we have that scripture again there is a way that what seems right seems right unto a man and appears straight the road is not straight <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing it is a straight road hallelujah like a drunkard when a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer he can see this door right here is that true based on his perspective the door is here and he will go convincingly now whether or not he's right will be shown shortly praise the lord he can see a gutter and according to what his eyes is seeing he's seen a staircase right and he reaches to that gutter and with every sense of conviction he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness now the bible says that there is a way that seems right many people have different ideas in the body of christ in the secular environment across our territories we have our ideas about the path to success we have our ideas about the way to know god more is that true we have our ideas about ministry how it should be we have our ideas about marriage we have our ideas about prosperity we have our ideas about the will of god about rapture about the coming of christ about satan so we live in a society where we have ideas in the body of christ for instance we have different ideas about god different ideas about the realities of the kingdom and these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions hallelujah in the secular environment we have different ideas about jobs about our work there are those who believe that walking is an insult is that true there are those who believe if you are not walking you are not yet a man or a woman you are still a child we have all kinds of ideologies but the bible says there is what a way it seems right unto a man but in the end look at it the dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong you see why it is dangerous imagine brothers and sisters that you took a 10 hour journey or 12 hour journey to lagos and you followed a wrong road 
and after 12 hours you meet his, a military man on the road and he says where are you really going and he says sir the truth is lagos he said ah you are at the other side of this nation so it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake are you getting what i'm saying everything looks the same it is time that shows what is true and what is false when you plant a crop both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases but when you allow time it will show the difference all of us right now are here we can jump i am successful oh the holy spirit is working with me the life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me i i remember then when i was in secondary school you know we wanted to make it so much every subject that we had to study we took it very seriously and um i did fine arts and one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing is that true and they called it what perspectives and so when we were given assignments they will tell us from so 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 perspective draw this building praise the lord there were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective they must be represented in your drawing is that true and i enjoyed it so much but then i got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone but that it was a revelation that was applicable in life perspectives everyone say perspectives that it matters your interpretation of life and everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from are you getting my point now if we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside is that true based on what the artist is drawing that was the information that his eyes could pick he may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here and then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it my goodness you would think koinonia is being held in a stadium perspectives so it is possible please listen to me that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life are you getting my point and be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective it's one of the biggest problems with the body of christ and so a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase are you getting me and a good life and a great life and from his perspective that is all there is to the Christian experience are you getting me and then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood it can cost you your life 
this is their perspective are you getting what i'm saying and to them it may not interest them so much when you are teaching this guy here is teaching i have come that you may have life is that true and have life more abundantly i refuse to be sick i refuse to be poor whereas another person looking at the same truth from another perspective begins to speak and say for me to live is christ and to die is gain if it will cost me my life so be it yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven there is a fight and this is his perspective now the trouble starts hear me when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective you see where error begins to come in when we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body hallelujah and so i'm here this is the perspective i've seen and now i look at the person in iraq and i say this guy does not have faith if he had faith guns and bullets will not enter his body whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here are you getting me i live in a house that is secured digitally and these guys here are speaking and say lord help these people not to be carnal let them not miss heaven let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread yet we are all supposed to be believers and then there are others watch this that this is not even the object they are looking at they are looking at something else are you getting my point now they are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty they are looking at something entirely different and from what they are seeing they fish out all sorts of doctrines so they are not even here they are not even here they are not even here it's not different dimensions of the same truth this is what the bible calls another gospel are you getting my point i marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel and all of those people will come together under an umbrella called christianity we believe we are worshiping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian the bible says there is a way everybody said there is a way now the trouble is everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues and it is important that you get to a point in your life this is why you find out have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something. Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense and this other person is now speaking and saying you guys are not pressing into the things of god you you are religious you you are carnal we are spiritual we are always working with angels there is fasting and prayer are you not seeing that jesus is coming soon there is global evangelization souls must be one you are talking about clothes and all this confusion are happening in the same house the bible calls it a great house but in a great house, there are what? 
not only vessels there are there are many they are all vessels but the bible says there are many vessels and god did not hide it from us he said some are unto honor but some vessels although they are vessels the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor he said they are vessels of clay it starts from there the first vessel is what clay vessels but clay something made them that way they have refused to transit they believe that that clay is gold and that is their conviction but the bible says there are vessels of wood they have moved from that realm of clay to being wood when fire comes it can burn them and they can become ashes but at least they are vessels of wood and then the bible says there are vessels of silver and then there are vessels of gold are you not are you seeing now that in the body of christ vessels are not the same it is called a great house the bible gives us the parable of 10 virgins they are all virgins meaning they have been spotless is that true so it's not talking about believers and unbelievers he was talking about people in the same fold but he said five were wise so it's possible to be a foolish virgin five were wise and the other five were what foolish what was the wisdom five took extra oil the other five were complacent with what they did they didn't press for more and a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them then the bible talks about the prodigal son he was not called the prodigal servant he was called the prodigal son so this was a family affair is that true but still in the same family the young man said i'm tired i want my inheritance and they gave it to him and he went out and landed with pigs hallelujah and when he came back the father received him and the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake he said i've been in this house not even one ram they have not caught anything for me and the father said all that i have is yours is someone following me tonight there is a way i have i have probed and i i do this all the time my convictions and my ideologies it is going to be a catastrophic thing brothers and sisters if at the end of our journey you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong imagine that at the end of your journey then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord oh. huh? for instance you now say Jesus come down ah come down you have cheated me come and explain to me I didn't enjoy the world I didn't do anything for you I don't need to find out but that's the level at which some of us are going right now because our convictions are not strong we even get to a point where we say how are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie hallelujah there is a way that seems right it seems right it seems accurate it seems like the way there are many books that have been written in the body of Christ all trying to describe how to do ministry all trying to describe how to be a success in life all trying to describe how to walk in the anointing is that not true oh goodness there are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing and there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing there are others who read it and entered something else there are others who read it and nothing happened lift your hands and say lord reveal the truth to me please say it lord reveal the truth to me jesus said it this way i am the way not any prophet not any apostle not any teacher not any pastor i am the way you follow men you will follow a lot of things are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life 
is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life. No matter how nice it sounds. There is something you can hear. No matter how ugly it sounds. It will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear. That will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear. That will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit. According to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence. And his spiritual argument. As powerful as they were. They were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got a one in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why you see brothers and sisters 
is part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage it's a privileged position not everybody is daft spiritually pastors never forget this when you stand there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking this is the situation the guy had been called a great man like we men of God are we just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great 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 one so according to that perspective I met people there who came down on their knees Joshua Selman I've been wanting to see you finally I get to see you yet ha, ya, 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 ya. he says whom when Aquila and Priscilla had that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day there were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla and they kept quiet worship team sang and the guy wore suit he came up and he began to speak when Aquila and Priscilla heard they said wow this guy has great potentials but there is so much you do not know how do you feel when someone tells you that embarrassing right if you ever feel embarrassed get set for stunted growth are you getting my point now the Bible says when they had what happened they took him like a boy Ah, amazing see come this is this is Apollos smart guy turn sharp guy this guy had been preaching divine healing is possible blah 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 and true true one headache God healed one headache this and that happened and one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla and while he was talking you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. Areas of excesses. Areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened verse 27 now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly when he was disposed to pass through Achaia the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him who when he was come he helped them much which had believed through grace how did he help them next verse for he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed that part was not taught him but when the guy had it he became a wonder could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught are you hearing what I'm saying who is God speaking to in this place tonight nobody say your pastor did not try don't let your revelation make you insult the people who are could it be brothers and sisters that you were taught about spiritual growth but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom and that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience and if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete what if you were taught that it is just all about success 
and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone are you hearing me that there are times that if need be you may have to die for your convictions if you open your heart to that dimension then you can enjoy the blessings of God buy all the flashy cars buy great houses but they never take your place because you know that you are a bond servant your Christian experience becomes more perfect are you getting me what if you have been taught that's the only devil you have is the devil in your mind there is no real devil anywhere there are no demons anywhere hmm. is that true what if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith and all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness rulers spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant christian it makes your christian experience richer are you hearing what i'm saying and it is for this cause ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please that he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens verse 10 verse 11 and he gave some what apostles and some and some and some and some perspectives he gave unto them he engraced his body with gifts listen to me revealed perspectives to them there are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church they can host a convention they can lift wheelchairs but they do not have the heart of a shepherd are you getting what i'm saying that is a dimension that is resident within a pastor in terms of office not just name i know we, we just have all the names mixed up but i mean in terms of office there are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders are you getting me the ability to stay with a congregation and teach them build them make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there if you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up there are people like that there are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life just locate them you're not going to hear any revelation i traveled somewhere and while i was there it was it was a, a, a conference and there were lots of prophets there hallelujah and i was amazed to see how these guys their understanding of the word was so little you know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny not it's not an insult i'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was but my goodness my goodness these people these people zeroed down the prophetic it was almost prophecy but at will i've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people but i'm not called into the prophetic office the grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you so for me i know that to prophesy it must happen with fasting and prayer it's not a gift for me i don't look at you now and say except i'm lying you see that if it's to tell a lie it's a very simple thing I can just say you there are things going wrong with your life of course that's a very easy way to lie <laughs> hallelujah so if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the holy spirit it's not a luxury for me 
That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12. Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people gifts in the body of christ that reveal the wisdom of god they have rejected the ministry the trouble is the bible says at the end let's have that scripture again at the end it will tell on you there are ministries for instance who love god but they have no desire for excellence in fact their interpretation of excellence is carnality is that true you ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe do not miss TV. People don't listen. Let me go on this. Let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel. But you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe some day I miss message. So please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access 
There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? Even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry. Because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago. And it was so much. You know, then, now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God, don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so-so-so person's tape. Throw it away. And you have done so to your own detriment. 
If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the, dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me, if I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is. It, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinchin or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues... Are you getting me? Is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time. I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we had to learn it. And then the man... That was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. That we, This memory you see, it's not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. 
We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? Fone. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darling Jack. As we're busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not... You go home straight there. You are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call. You know how the Bible says it. Rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to. Anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this. No. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you will have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car. Eh? Or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. And the reason is that you have been a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. 
And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God, but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God, mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy, very short guy. My goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me and he said there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it. Very quickly, we are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to, you see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we were ministering, I didn't know that the church hate music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent. Because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. and say, when you, are free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. 
this ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people. Where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet, David danced. Yet, it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God, I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you. And the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now. And then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me, scared me in a way that I said, ah. And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you. 
But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samadeh and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who are people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadhi and add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. You say it's witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord.
Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you. Lay hands on this sick body. And you say no Kai. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to. It's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual. We love things happening normally. Let it be happening the way I have always known it. And the moment I see another perspective, then it is not of God. It is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guest is carnal. Everybody is one before God. And in those churches when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. Once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. 
you didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me and you entered the people were looking at you and young man keep quiet I can't keep quiet this is what I believe because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a Christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around. You are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God. It convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that his hair had gone. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men. Oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be. That's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lampstand has been taken let me tell you god can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person may god not take your position and give another saul was still in the palace Whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, me, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems i could go that far because people made me look like god sent you to us and then i listened to an apostle of wisdom dr mike Mudok, and he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry he said never try to do to people what only god can do to them deliverance that was it i learned how to sleep soundly because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? 
I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. It, I was wearing out, literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp. No. I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels, there are dimensions in the spirit I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth. Of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit. To all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up. To the dimensions of the spirit. That are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are, you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction, divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet. A genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one on one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one. And. Let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait. Because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness, but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. 
Some of us probably are finished. You want to know, am I still going to be in Zaria? Am I going to go somewhere? Is that the scripture? What did I say? Proverbs what? Oh, no, no. Psalm, sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. I'm sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. We need divine direction in our lives. You can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered. The steps... The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came, that's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship, but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married, but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life, but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle nothing will work when you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place everything is commanded to work for you there why do we need divine direction our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure this is one of the reasons why we need divine direction our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure which many times is limited i need divine direction because if god does not direct me i can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia i can look out and say wow there's a crowd inside and outside i'm comfortable I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination whereas you are walking in darkness the light of the body is the eye therefore when thy eye is single thy whole body is full of light but when thy eye is evil your body is also full of darkness 35 there's a warning for us everyone read want to read take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness that means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know whereas is wrong hallelujah for instance i will never marry a man who is rich who is not rich for instance i will never marry a broke man i don't want to suffer that's a light that you have you think it is light whereas when you allow god to help you you will see that is darkness what if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage. As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? 
I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not. Listen. It's not an insult. Look up, please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are, no matter how apostolic you think you are, many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing, but God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. 
He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be honored, where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet. But you see, listen, it is not of him that willeth. It is not of him that runneth. If you cannot wait for God to direct you, I'll never forget I was rejoicing. The year we we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start, I was so happy because I was saying, Lord, my, share my assignment now is over. Let me run and find something very useful and do. Let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere. Let me just enjoy my life. And then God summoned a meeting at once. And when I went, I almost fainted the day God told me. Those who were around me, my reaction, it was like, how about God? How about God? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners so God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two. When you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. He says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit. Either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. He says, when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture 
where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt, they were forewarned. Genesis 41, don't turn there. Just write it, please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul, he's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too. Elderly people, not just elders in church. Men who have had the advantage of age in their lives. But my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship. One great platform to receive spiritual direction. You can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life. Hallelujah. Wisdom to your life. I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking and I was sharing with him about something and while I was talking to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been marching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling, when I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them. I'm wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. 
the prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. He must not be called a prophet. He could be called an apostle like, like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Or he could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8, from verse 7 to 15, I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so, so that our time is gone. I mean, this project, this one now. 2 Kings 8, verse 7 to 15. is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and ben Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, the man of God is come. Hit the next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant. Take a present in thy hand. See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed? And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord saying, Shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him even of every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria has sent me to thee saying shall I recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and Elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of God thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it the Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says... He settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with the sword and thou will dash their children and reap up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life the next verse and Hazael said but what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing and Elisha answered the Lord had shown me that you are the king I came as a boy but by prophecy God is showing that you will be king but I'm telling you now when you become king correct your mistakes this is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry, a, I'm joking, no. you are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. 
Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me. You go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25. Down to the end. Tells us about the famine in Samaria. And how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry. And in 24 hours it ended famine. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38 we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he is saying now? Listen. God's plans does not change his purposes does not change, sorry, but his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos, but because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday and we never open ourselves to find out could it be that God is saying something else we feel if you bend to something else that God is saying it proves that you did not hear God I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38 a true prophet came with a word from the Lord are you hearing what I'm saying this is very important You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema. That the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 27 to 30.
That's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. Prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one, many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great that famine throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated. And one time we got talking and I said, look, young man, listen. You do the job. The job he was doing, he was teaching in one school. Guess his salary, 5,000 naira per month. And if you don't come to teach the students, they will still deduct something from it. I told him, remain there. He's teaching you discipline. He's teaching you submission. God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. He said, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And he said, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I 
I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home? Where did it go? He said, it's still there, oh, but I... I found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it. I said, really? Wisdom from experience. Could it be that this is a revelation for someone? You finished school. You've done everything. For one year, you did not get a job. People think you don't have faith. God is teaching you the art of waiting. It will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly. You are virtuous. Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute. All the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. God told you pray about it. You said it does not matter. If only you prayed. If only you took out time. You probably would not have started the ministry. Now you've started the ministry and it's killing you. If only you took out time to pray. You would have known that that friend is a deceitful person. He looked like an angel. When he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you, pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays. It pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way of trying to get the anointing. There is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I don't trust myself outside of you. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of cycle after cycle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes for as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need divine direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flog it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. 
Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a road that the power of God is moving outside. There is a road outside. It will start with a lady. There is a lady right now under the power of God. And it will follow to that road. Open the floodgates of heaven, O oh God. Hallelujah. All of you in this front row, just hold your hands. Just this row looking at me. Hold your hands. Lift it up. Father, let it come like a mighty wind. Take it now. 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 Soto preteke techeta. Repeteke techeteba. Som preteke tala ba 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 ba. Let it come like fire. Yeah. giving me the name of someone Sarah Sarah just leave them don't worry don't don't scatter what God is doing. hallelujah God is bringing deliverance to your family hold my hands it ends now 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 be delivered I cast that devil Cast that devil by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We will have a visitation tonight. Lift your hands. I want to call spirits that are responsible for marital delay. Every spirit wife, every spirit husband, many of you will be surprised at what will happen to you. Some of you are already out. You came out for impartation. Lift your hands. At the count of three, the fire of the spirit will be separating men. Every devil causing delay in marriage. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Lord, as they shout Jesus, I expose every devil and it leaves them forever. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Now I call spirits. I call spirits. Marital delay. I call spirits. Every marital delay. I cause you. I 
I open doors of marriages now. Doors of marriage be open. Every spell, every enchantment, every act of divination. Right now, I set you on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire now. I challenge altars. I challenge thrones. I challenge spells. We break every chain. We break every chain. We break every chain. We break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Let her go now. Go. Let her go now. Go. Be free. Lay your hands on your stomach. God is setting you free. The devil must let you go. There's someone in this room where I'm standing. The power of God will come upon you now. Somebody in this room, a strong anointing will come upon that person. Please speak that person right now. It's coming by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's one person. It's a deliverance fire. It will fall on you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Pick the person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone holding like a child outside. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me in a vision. Please pick them inside. I'm seeing someone. It's like you're holding. Is it a child I'm seeing? Is there such person like that? Please. Who is that? Come, 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 please. Save time. We have to minister to other people. There's this lady standing close to you. That lady. Yes, with white head tie. My dear, is that, lift your hands where you are. Visit her now, oh God. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I cast that wicked spirit in the name of Jesus. Listen. Those of you here, just lift your hands. Lift your hands. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There will be a wild move of the spirit because I see a lot of demonic oppressions. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Let the power of God move. Move right now. Move right now. Move right now. I cause every power. I cause every power. Bring them in. Let her go now to break every chain. Who brought her? What's wrong with her? I've been at times like this. She does like this. this is demonic oppression. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Is she okay? She's not okay. Look at me. Hold my hands. Satan, let her go now. Look at what is happening. Are you seeing this? Look at the spirit tormenting her. Let her go. Let your legs be stretched now. Look at what is happening to the legs. Is the camera watching? Watch this. This is the power of God by itself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. 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 Watch this. Look at her deliverance. Out. Out of her now. Out. Out, out, kate paratapa. I return her back to sanity. Every madness out of her now. Excuse me, 
every madness out out never returns i see an altar on fire this is what i'm seeing this is what is responsible let me tell you every altar speaking against everyone tonight it will catch fire this night in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you jesus liver stand up stand up and follow me stand up by yourself and follow me stand up come follow me stand up walk come 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 on, can you sing? I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Every madness of the devil has to find its way. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. At, look at what look at what the devil has done to this lady huh? look at are you seeing for meeting look at the things that the devil has done bastardize this lady's life look at me what's your name Lester. what's your name Lester. what's your name Lester. say Jesus. Jesus say I am fine she literally ate her mouth and injured it like that look at you can see where the skin was taken. Look at me. Follow me. Say, I am fine. I'm fine. Say, I'm fine. I'm fine. It never returns to you again. <laughs> Stretch your hands and say, it's over. <laughs> this deliverance is over. <laughs> if there is any other person with any sign of madness in this place or any kind of psychosomatism, be free now in the name of Jesus. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Look at me. The demons that torment you have left you and will never return to you again. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. Please take her child. This is, I'm seeing witchcraft. The Lord is showing me witchcraft. People will rise in the family. When they get to a point, something hits them down. And that's the end of it. No matter what happens. This is what the Lord is showing me. But the Lord is going to bring deliverance. Please lift your hands. Because this is, I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft. My God and my King, let this thing end right now. Because this thing is not just with you alone. It's with your family members. My God, let it end now. Let it end now. Even to your husband. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Madam, this is your child. Please hold, hold the child. Where is your husband? Eh? Where is he? He's in summer. What's he doing? We have to pray for him. You know why I asked? I'm seeing the spirit of death. Huh? I'm seeing a man holding, and please, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. I'm seeing a man holding like chalk. Huh? It's chalk, writing. As in his writing. Is he a teacher? He's a lecturer. lecturer. He's a lecturer. This is death coming on him. And we have to break it. Are you getting that now? Do you believe it? 
if you don't believe, I will just leave you before you now turn and say this person. The reason why we say this is because I understand that there are all kinds of perverted visions and revelations and corruption of the prophetic. So everybody that seems to reveal something, people just think that, ah, this person has done this and that. Are you getting my point now? I must not, see, God must not show me what is happening to her husband for him to be delivered. I hope you know that. The word of God is potent enough to deliver the person. You understand? But God does these things as a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A family is about to be delivered right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. A family is about to be delivered right now. Be delivered now. I'm not speaking. Out! Now! I hear the chains falling. Two of you come. Are you related? Come, come, come. Two of you. Yes. What's your relationship? Eh? Is your boss? You are learning to sew in his place. Don't laugh. I don't mean love relationship. I mean, what's your relationship? Huh? Because I saw the clothes I'm wearing on you suddenly. Are you getting my point now? God is just delivering people. Out! Let her go. Uh, ushers, you are still not exempted. Be doing your work and be sensitive. Anything can happen to you. Be doing your work and be very, very... Please, everybody be sensitive. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. You will experience dramatic increase in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your hands together. There's witchcraft in your family. Wait. Yes, sir. True. There's everybody. It's not like every. This is death. This is delay marriage. La Wait now. Calm down. God is going to set you free. Huh? Look at me. Just look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. Try to look at me. Do your best. Do your very best. He's unable to look at me just because it's an instruction. It's not like it's any herbal thing. God is setting you free. A habit is leaving you and a curse is leaving you. You look at me. Do your best. Lord, I attack witchcraft to its root. Out! Something's moving. Something's changing. Feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving. Something's changing. over your husband in the name of the Lord Jesus every spirit of death by the blood we command that you leave him in the name of Jesus none shall die in the name of Jesus Christ come sign up it's time for God to step into your family run and come see I don't need to call you just connect by faith God is already touching people and families. Are you getting my point now? Financial increase is coming to your family. Take it now. Financial increase, mighty increase coming to your family. That's what the Lord is telling me. Mighty increase. I break the limitation. The same thing is happening to that lady. That's why this is happening. Every other person, oh God, that you are bringing financial increase. I know everybody will be touched. Listen, when God does one, 
and you see other people reacting is because it's the same prophecy so let's just maximize what god is doing lift your hands father everyone who belongs to this category at the count of three may the anointing to make it happen be released one two three take it now 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 financial bondage broken outside broken This is a cause of hardship. In the name of Jesus, let her go. I release her and her family. Out! Out! That cause of hardship. Out! The Lord is bringing increase for your father. I'm seeing traditional things. These are habal things I'm seeing in a shrine. The Lord is taking them away and bringing serious financial increase to your family lord confirm your word i've spoken as you have shown me let it be confirmed in the name of jesus this is your baby please give somebody hold the baby take away this garment of shame over your life in the name of Jesus this garment of shame go be set free be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah who is Eunice 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 Lord is ministering to me. A lady called Eunice. Who is that? Please, if it's your name or someone related, we have to save time. Eunice. Gabriel. 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 I'm seeing the last digits of a GSM number. 221. 221. That's the last digit of your phone number. 221. Who is that? You are the one? Do I know you? Okay, Gabriel. Okay. 221. Please, if that is yours, just come out. 221. The last digits. 221. Please verify. Don't come and tell us lies here. 221. That's what I'm seeing. It's like something covered the rest and I'm seeing 221. If that is yours, please come on. Gabriel, can I pray for you? Stand up, please, sir. What do you do? I'm an artist. Is that the only thing you do? Final department. Okay. I want to pray for you. Because what God is showing me, I'm not seeing you drawing. Huh? This is this is business I'm seeing. You look at me. Do you believe what I'm saying? I want to pray for you because things are tight for you right now. You're just looking, but things are not are really, really tight. Father, visit him. You called out Gabriel. Receive this visitation right now. In the name of Jesus. Your name is Gabriel too. Who is Adamu? Uh, 
Huh? Is a man in Kano. What? A man in Kano. Where do I know Adamu from? What's your relationship with Adamu? We work together. We work together. Is he a nice man? No. He's a wicked man. God is bringing justice to you. Hold my hands. Look at me. Have I met you? Do I know you? How do I know that there's a relationship between Gabriel and Adamu? Hmm? Do you believe that God is setting you free? Father, like it was for Jacob and Laban, let there be justice. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may there be mighty justice. Look, let me tell you, your life is about to change. It will shock you. Huh? But your relationship with God, did you, did you rededicate your life here? Do your own now. You are supposed to come out. Why did you stay back? This is what is giving legal access. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lift your hands. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I'm serious with my relationship with you. I make up my mind to stop playing games. From tonight, I'm a genuine child of God. Women, out of his life. Every spirit of immorality, lost, and every related thing I cause you, be free. My God will give you promotion that will honor you and lift him in Jesus' name. Why are you here? Why are they here? What is eh? All of you are Eunice. Is she married? God is visiting your family. Out! There is a garment of shame God is taking away from your life. Huh? You are a lady boy. It's like you are a man. Nobody is coming to you. Nobody cares. Nobody is even saying your hair is fine. We have to take this in a way. Look at me, my dear. It's not normal. We have to curse it. Lord Jesus, help this lady. Now, I restore that glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I won't say it here, but be careful. Huh? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying, right? Do you understand? Please be very careful. The devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. But God shows you mercy and grace. Huh? Lay your hands on your stomach. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be perfection. Lord is not even talking about you. He's talking about your elder ones. I've seen them. It's because it's the same thing that is happening there. I've taught you people. Bring out. Lord, let it be over now. Just lay your hands on my hands. It ends. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. I appoint unto you a season of liberty. In the name of the Lord Jesus. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. What is happening to you is happening to her. At the same time. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. It's the same thing that is happening to her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. God is going to do something strange in this place right now. 
All of you from Kogi State, lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. This is a very strange instruction. There will be massive deliverance right now. Follow me, instrumentalist, please. At the count of three, this is a territorial deliverance. Lift your hands, please. Follow me, instrumentalist. One, every altar, catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. Shake it, 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 it. outside. I command. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. All the children that have been buried. The blood. Lord in Kogi State, as you have shown me, every Kogi person, every altar against your life, catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. Bring them out them out deliverance every altar the children that have been buried I command the earth share in the word of the Lord I come with an apostolic territorial mantle let there be deliverance massive deliverance now now I'm seeing snakes I'm seeing snakes all kinds of snakes all kinds of snakes this is what I'm seeing they catch fire now they catch fire now every serpent every devil I speak to shrines I speak to altars I speak to covens by the anointing of the spirit for the spirit of the lord tonight is upon me i challenge you i command an exodus an exodus an exodus I you will hear testimonies they will carry the dead bodies of men those who are found they will carry dead bodies of witches and wizards that will not let you go I command the vengeance of God let the dagger of judgment fall upon every shrine. Let the dagger of God's judgment, I command it. If I be an apostle of God, I command it. Hallelujah You have won the victory Come on, lift your hands and worship Hallelujah You have won it all for me You have won Everyone who is sick, lay your hands there right now. For time's sake, we may not have everyone come on, but lay your hands. Something miraculous will happen in this place right now. Wherever you are, lay your hands. Some you're laying your hands, but what is if it's in an area that you cannot lay your hands, just lay your hands on your chest. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. The moment I pray for you, the power of God is already healing people right now. 
check yourself the moment you find out that the miracle is happening to you maybe not everybody just run out and come and stand here there will be an explosion of miracles you must celebrate what God is doing who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when my God has not established hallelujah lay your hands now and while Jesus was teaching the power of God was present to heal the Bible says and when the evening was come they brought unto him all that were sick and crippled and oppressed please take it serious this is a miracle service we don't fake it in this place a miracle is about to happen as I begin to command please check yourself start doing what you could not do this is the point where your faith is needed hallelujah in the name of Jesus the son of the living God and by the mystery of the blood that pays the price for the ransom of anything in the spirit the blood is a receipt that can pay for anything in the spirit and Lord I pray right now as I begin to declare I want you to shout a loud amen miracles are already happening in the name of Jesus blind eyes be open now blind eyes every eye condition be healed now be healed now every kind of deafness complete or partial deafness be healed now be healed now God is touching people peptic ulcer be healed now be healed now peptic ulcer peptic ulcer you will feel like fire burning on your chest right now that's ulcer being healed God is healing ulcer ulcer you will feel fire burning on your chest ulcer is being healed right now I give you the praise I give you the praise I give you the praise lump in the breast lump in the breast the right breast lump in the right breast is being healed now lump is being healed now I cause that spirit I cause that spirit by the prophetic word lady is going to start coughing things out she's going to start coughing things out right now she will start coughing things out hallelujah hallelujah migraine headache every kind of migraine be healed now be healed now be healed now every respiratory condition someone is going to feel something jump out of your chest now every respiratory condition heart condition breathing problem I command the spirit leave now leave now those outside make sure you are connected leave now in the name of Jesus There are so many ladies with so much pain even if you are not on your period your stomach I cause that pain together with all kinds of menstrual pain menstrual pain of all sorts go now go now go now menstrual pain is of the devil I don't care what medicine says go now now now
irregular period the lord is healing that now right now there's a lady you've been on your period for two months non-stop it dries up now now and there's a lady from november last year you don't need to come out from november last year you've only seen your period twice in the name of the lord jesus i restore order to your body now i restore order the power of god is moving to this effect i restore order now now hallelujah please begin to check yourself begin to check yourself a tooth problem has been healed i give you the praise lord a toothache tooth problem serious tooth problem the lord is healing it right now right now right now right now lord let every healing every healing hallelujah now I really want to conserve time I'm just thinking since Pastor Jake is here we can lay hands faster on the sick do I need to call the sick to come out is that a good idea answer now let's work together because I know there are people you are still not satisfied okay please and please if you've been healed just stay back especially for our guests who are coming here for the first time and then a few others if you check your body and you see that you are still sick and you need the touch of God please come out and line up thank you Jesus worship rain is falling down healing rain is falling down I'm not afraid I'm not afraid Brought, who brought our daddy he came on his own he came on his own what's wrong sir difficult in walking, difficult in walking. your leg what happened sir I don't feel, one day I just feel like they are me. I can't quit. your leg is weak I'm going to pray for you daddy and Jesus will heal you right now hold my hand sir don't worry just sit down Thank you, Jesus. The power of God will start moving your leg. Lord, thank you for healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You see something happening to your leg? You're feeling something happening to your leg, right? Yes. The power of God is moving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Christ of God. Daddy, look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, stand up. Come, come, come. Help him, help him. This is stroke. This is stroke. In the name of Jesus, I curse it. I curse it. I curse it. Sir, at the count of three, lift up both of your hands. One, two, three. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. That stroke hand, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Daddy, try walking. Come. Hold my hands. Follow me. Come. Come. Look at me. Look at me. Come. 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 Just turn. Turn. By yourself. Just do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. Come on now. Look at God giving the miracle. In the name of Jesus, are you seeing the power of God now?
not only has God healed you daddy God is going to restore to you every worm has eaten everything the palmer worm has eaten because the Lord is showing me that the enemy would have taken your life first week of October they would have buried you first week of October this is what the Lord is showing me but in the name that is above all names four years, four years now for four years this has been the devil had wanted to destroy you I'm seeing first week of October they would have buried you but in the name that is above all names the Bible says the heaven of the heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given so all earth I forbid you from taking this man's body in the name of Jesus he will live long he will live strong and for every one of you praying for him may your family members live long in the name of the Lord Jesus daddy we are going to walk one more time look at look at he's so excited to the shame of the devil to the shame of the devil to the shame of the devil come and walk again daddy walk hallelujah hallelujah please take him to his seat the lord perfects him in the name of jesus worship him help us let's save him you are not the only one all the people in your family that came come and stand here this is witchcraft come and stand here this is not sickness what a mighty god we serve please hurry up just save our time please the creator of heaven and earth will 
set the whole family free. Kai, this is witchcraft. Acute witchcraft. You know you need a miracle, right? Huh? You came here trusting God. Huh? What did the doctors tell you? My leg. Wait now. I need to pray for you. Huh? The leg issue is a simple issue. If I don't pray for you, they are going to diagnose you with cancer. Huh? Cancer of the breast. Cancer of the breast now. It's cancer. This is what I'm telling you. If we don't destroy it now, this is cancer of the breast. It's witchcraft. Huh? It's okay. Don't cry. Please. Please. We don't have handkerchief here. Handkerchief. Oh, please. Madam. Listen. The, I told you he's dead. Where is, where is your husband? is there where is your mother my mother is dead They've, uh, wait i'm showing you that this is witchcraft they want to kill everybody in your family huh they want your son where's your son my senior brother wait who is paralyzed completely if there is a god in heaven hear me if there is god in this place tonight your deliverance comes you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me hold my hands jesus change their story let the speaking blood speak right now in the name of Jesus, I break the chains of witchcraft. Please help this woman with a handkerchief. Anybody, anybody, please. Free! Now! Madam, if there is a God, you will return back to this place to testify. I cause cancer now, 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 out of her body by the power of the Holy Ghost. Cancer dies now, together with the leg issue. Your leg will start moving now, supernaturally by itself. Your leg will start moving under the influence of the Spirit, and that evil thing upon your leg leaves you forever. Baby, hold my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this innocent girl. Look at this girl. Where's the camera? When you look at this girl, you see a walking corpse. Do you understand? I'm seeing a coffin in the spirit. They have finished this girl since last year. This girl you are seeing. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said it. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Father, change this girl's story. I bring you out of the valley of the shadow of death. In the name of Jesus Christ, out now, out now, out now. In the name of Jesus, I change the story of this family now. Whatever legal access the devil has over your family. We lift up the blood as the price for your ransom. Therefore, we command your exodus now. The same thing is happening to someone here. Exodus now. Everyone marked for death. I command your exodus now. Everyone marked for death. Everyone marked for death. I command your exodus now. In the name of Jesus. Let's save time. Thank you, Jesus.
let her free. In the name of Jesus. Come. Yo. 
your season has come. Your season of smiling has come. Story. Yes, Mama. Uh, where are they born the king can't enter? They say they want to do the place of But I hear for say, my father, you must die. You are saying medicine, we are praying for you. You are pregnant? No. Where are they born the king? Huh? They disturb me. They say they want to do the operation. Now they say I must die. I can't hear for the night. Say my father, you must die. Hey, I don't I don't get the whole details. Oh, a voice is saying she must die. Who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? He said, no witchcraft, no enchantment against Jacob shall stand. See, don't let all this nonsense voice. It's when you don't know who you are. I think we are going to sing that song. Chosen generation. We need to shout it to the devil that we are not confused. Worship it. Are you ready now? Give us that song. Sing anything, even if you don't know the fashion. Just sing the one you know. Are you ready now? Time you will sleep here. Oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
You are <laughs> <laughs> Mommy be healed. Every planting that is not of God, we uproot it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Every growth in your body dissolves and passes out of this body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have your prayer request? Please start submitting it. Usher, start getting a prayer request. Prayer requests are very important. They are not a formality. If you've not written it, now is the time. Send a text to your loved one. And say, send it fast. There is a God that answers prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say. Yes, he is mighty to say. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is great in this place. Please write out your prayer requests. Don't spare anything. Hallelujah. Please, I want to pray. I want to lay hands on all the children all the little children from age 1 to 10 just 1 to 10 if you are more than 10 keep them 1 to 10 please bring them out 1 to 10 mothers if you are tired give somebody to hold the child and come with it please just hurry up let's save time while we collect it please if you are not interested, you can sit back, please. Bring all the children. We must lay hands. Ah, that's a baby. Teach me how to hold them. Before I strangle the neck of this baby. <laughs> Come and hold the mic for me. Let me do serious business. Baby has small nose like you. Hold on. Baby, we prayed for your arrival. Oh. Every barren woman in this place, stand up. Everybody, stand up. Ah! I use Wumi as a point of contact. I'm very serious now. Every family here trusting God for the fruit of the womb God is breaking barrenness 
the same God that brought this baby. The Bible says children are a heritage from the Lord. My God, I pray, I cause barrenness to its root now. In the name of Jesus. Baby, may you be strong. May you grow to be a beautiful and a godly girl. We separate you in advance from destiny killers. Wolves in sheep's clothing. May they never find you in the name of Jesus. All those who are determined to destroy the life of visionary people, they will never find this baby in the name of Jesus. I'm going to lay hands on every one of this child. I want you to help me. If you know that you are a mother or a father, or you plan to be a mother or a father, even if you don't plan, just join us. Hallelujah. Many of you are, especially those of you who are trusting God for marriage this year. I hope you know the year is still young. Is this all the faith you brought for this meeting? Now is the time to believe God and stretch your hands and say, Lord, as you did it to them. I didn't say, come out, oh. Don't worry, immediately I finish. All those who are trusting God for marriage this year, if you think you are bold enough and you are not ashamed, immediately after this, march out and stand. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Don't let anybody look. I'm serious. Hold on. If you know you have a lot to do in your destiny, you are a hundred level and you just come and march out here. Please, we are not playing jamboree here. I know there are men of God that do, we are acting based on instruction. Make sure your father and your mother will smile when you tell them you are ready to get married. Don't cause anything that will come and disgrace the name of the Lord. Praise God. All of you stretch your hands. It's amazing. Let me challenge men. I don't see any father standing here. And I, if I remember very well, I know that Mary was the only woman who just gave birth like that without a man. Fathers, men. Every gentleman say, say myself behave. Say it myself behave. When it comes to responsibility, many men leave the women. But if the baby takes first, you are the one who wants to go to the school. Ladies, say I refuse. Stretch your hands. Let's pray for them. Every blessing you know you would give your child, release it to them. Pastor Jakes, please, let's lay hands on them. Father, we lay hands on these children. Every spell, name of the Lord Jesus everything that makes your brain dull we command that you are not dull in the name of jesus christ bring her please in the name of jesus christ baby grow in the fear of the lord in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now if you know honestly please don't play games with god here you know that you are trusting god to settle down maritally in this 2014 come out and stand here please we are not playing games i am very very serious about it God is a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. He is a glorious God. God is I know you are a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. Sing it one more.
more time. Ready to marry this year? Are you joking? Eh? You are standing in for somebody. Okay. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. We are young people, but it doesn't mean we are indisciplined. Are you getting my point now? Now look up. I want to say something very important. Some of you standing here are the enemies of your own marriages. Hallelujah. Gideon said, why have we not seen these manifestations? He said, destroy the altars. Any ungodly relationship that you are in, that is stopping your life partner from coming, we break it from the realm of the spirit now. May that married man never call you again. I know you have been getting money from him, but the relationship is hereby declared non and for it. you must choose to walk in holiness and integrity hallelujah there are people standing here that there are powers and thrones please lift your hands and horns that attempt to lift themselves against your marriage you are a very pretty lady but nobody can look at you the moment a guy looks at you and is trying to talk to you something just happens and scatters it there are some of us you are guys you are you are a hard-working and disciplined person but the moment any lady comes to you today she says she's she's serious after one week there are some of you people come and they die some of you have even had introduction and the guy ran away but in the name that is above all names listen this is an apostolic ministry we are not ashamed the bible says i am not ashamed of the gospel every aspect of the gospel that brings freedom we will preach it and we will set people free lift your hands you will be very surprised i said it at the beginning of the year that god told me there will be surprise marriages even people who did not believe and expect listen let me give you a revelation my bible says male and female he created them what and what did he say female and female did he say male and male that means ladies there is a male counterpart for you you believe that i'm going to pray for the man not a man are you getting me not one man meandering around and you say let me manage time is going no you can read a course you don't like and manage for five years and leave. You cannot manage marriage. Lift your hands. Let's first destroy these altars of Baal. See that, Ababa. Get ready because the power of God is about to shatter spells into pieces. Father, everyone here under the influence of any spirit husband or spirit wife or any enchantment in the name of the lord jesus at the count of three may deliverance come to you one two three right now right now right now i cause it i cause it let them go let them go now i release you now i release you now 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 every spirit sitting on your marital destiny i set it on fire now hallelujah now i prophesy to you in the name of the lord jesus father your people have come out because they are ready to settle down in the name of jesus whatever attribute they need to have to become award-winning wives and husbands may it come upon them now in the name of jesus wherever your husband is 
if he is walking in this earth right now just like Boaz located Ruth I call forth your life partner now by prophecy now goodness the power of God is creating a connection right now right now in the realm of the spirit right now in the name of Jesus I connect you in the realm of the spirit I break every soul tie I break every soul tie I break every covenant stopping you from marriage right here we are going to hold your wedding card and announce it to the shame of the devil in the name of Jesus some of you are ready to marry there's no money God punish the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus we call forth supply the beds that brought food for Elijah in the name that is above all names receive divine supply now Go and return with your testimony. Please rise up everybody. Pastor Jax, please come. Pastor Jax is going to lead us to pray and prophesy on this request. Listen friends, we have a God that answers prayers. There are just a few minutes and we'll be out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please just stretch forth your hands towards this place and communicate with God. Get Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray. Rabala bakashi paragale bondo si parabale bregale lele bokosa. Rakata na da rabasi te bale bondo bregale la varia da rabakasa na rabali gede. Riha tasa parabagodi a de bale bregale de de bokosa ni rabada. Inde rakata da bato parakata bale bregale la varia rabado varia. Rakoto pa ya rakata ya rabara bala bala. Ende bregale le bondo bregale bale bregale la varakada. Rakata ya rabala bala 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 bala. Rakata bale varia rabada. Enda rakata la bara bata la bara bada. Rakata da bahasa para bada. Rakata li bara bapa bapa bapa. Enda regelele le boko si bala bada. Rapato salietando ho. Imanda katoja ila. Barus aliatando. Iga boja ila. Raunda as ila palierno. Resula Italia. Rusa indo ko. Iamba uada. Wapula ada yondelu. Riamula. Uacha kayuna ma, uatu ya 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 miela, ruma uba ura gana, Rusia na, makondo robo kosi kama. Father Lord, even as we lift up these prayers before you, we ask that the fire of God come. Let the fire come from your presence. Let it come upon these prayers, Lord. Let it rise like incense to you. We release angels of God, angels of God to visit homes, angels of God to visit people in hospitals, angels of finances be released, angels of breakthrough, angels of marriages, angels responsible for salvation, healings for loved ones. In the name of Jesus, we release contracts. We release contracts. We release contracts in the name of Jesus. We speak for the to building projects. Let it arise in the name of Jesus. We speak into dead academics. Let it rise. Dead spiritual lives. Let it rise. The grace of God comes upon families. In the blessed name of Jesus. We speak to barren cases. Family challenges. In the name of Jesus. It ends. We speak to divorce cases. Aha. Lord, for those trusting you. For you to bring back their loved ones. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, we ask that fathers come back home. In the name of Jesus, we call for missing people. We ask that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the angels of God, bring them back in the blessed name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak right now into the highway. Aha! Lord, for our loved ones traveling right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the hand of God will be upon them. The Lord will shield them in the blessed name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for every prayer point here, Lord. It receives answers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray 
and the church of God says hallelujah 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 as God's servant has prayed we convert this prayer request to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ please everybody stand inside and outside please rise something must change in your life right now and Balak told Balaam he said go and curse the nation of Israel and Balaam told him he said I have been commanded to bless and this I have done he said I cannot reverse it hallelujah scripture said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it destroy it not for there is a blessing hallelujah the Bible says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established he said believe in his prophets and you shall prosper I want you to believe that the word that is about to come forth right now can do something remarkable in your life we've had testimonies indescribable this is the moment where breakthrough comes this is the moment where lots of miracles begin to happen please lift your head Hallelujah. He said, Weep not, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing, thou that did not have a child. He said, For many are the children of the desolate. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I come under the apostolic unction and I command. Receive breakthrough now. Breakthrough now. Breakthrough now. I command breakthrough now. In every area of your life. Breakthrough now. Receive breakthrough now. Every limit. Every limit. I smash it in the name of Jesus. Whatever has not been working in your life right now in the name that is above all names I command it to start working now Start working now Every voice speaking against anyone here that every time you want to move forward There is a voice listen the Bible says in six things shall he deliver you job five he said yes seven things he said in the time of famine you will laugh and you will shall be delivered from the scorching tongues of men in the name that is above all names i command every scorching tongue against your destiny be silenced now be silenced now be silenced now Silence now. Be silence now. Be silence now. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified whatever has stopped your growth whether spiritually or academically the bible says they 
that dwell in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God like the cedars of Lebanon will they be fat and flourishing I command barrenness to be over now I cause barrenness now I cause barrenness record to secretary reports come to Shabbat And Jesus said, every tree that has not been planted by my father. <laughs> Hallelujah. I shared with you last week on the mysteries of the kingdom. That there is the mystery of sleep. Something happens in the earth when men sleep. The Bible says while men slept. It's not backsliding. While they slept. An alien came and planted something and went away and people woke up with diseases they did not sleep with in the name of jesus every foreigner in your body and your life that my father has not planted come out of their bodies now come out of their bodies now by the fire of the holy ghost come out of their bodies now hallelujah and the lord told moses he says see i have made you a god unto pharaoh see i have made you a god unto pharaoh everything that has oppressed your life and has put you under bondage tonight you rise up above and beyond that challenge now In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the sons of the prophet told Elisha, he said, where we meet with you is too small. Come, let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says, while they were felling the tree at Jordan, the axe head fell. And they said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the prophet said, where did it fall? And he threw a stick and the ant head began to float i reverse tonight in the name that is above all names every situation over your life that you know only god can change it may that god change it now every situation in your life that only god can change may that god change now change it now change it now That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream and so said among the heathen the Lord has done great things for them he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity oh God as the rivers in the Negev I pray let it turn around blessing hit somebody right now let it turn around blessing hit somebody right now hallelujah because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore God even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows and the Bible says Esther went in and when the king saw her he said Esther what would you have me do even up to half of my kingdom everywhere you need to enter for the next level of your life reporto soto we break protocols tonight and we command that God will take you there. May my God take you there. May my God take you there. Hallelujah. And the man who was crippled from birth, he needed a miracle, but there was no man to help him. And the Bible says some people lifted him and tore the zinc and put him. It's one thing for men to want to help you but it's another thing for them to vow to help you all the way i prophesy every destiny helper that is responsible for the next level of your life career wise marriage wise 
academic wise I call them into your life now 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 hallelujah the Bible says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about Genesis 24 verse 1 and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things how many things how many things every part of your life that is remaining to align with the all things anointing the Bible says Naaman second Kings 5 was the captain of the Syrian army he was a mighty man the Bible says but he was crippled I pray every other area of your life that needs the touch of God let that area of your life receive that divine touch now receive it now receive it now hallelujah the Bible says is there hope for a tree although it be cut down he said at the scent of water at the scent of water everything in your life that has gone down that you're asking can God take me back to this level again some of you are asking can I go back to the level of anointing I used to function in again can God take me to that level of grace again my God and your God restores all things for you now the Lord most high restores all things now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest and abide with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and now I pray for you may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord lift up his face before you may he lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ give God praise in the name of Jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you